let's talk about LA casting because I've been using it for three months now and I just want to give you a little bit of what I've experienced in the last three months, what kind of jobs I've gotten through with them, what kind of casting calls I have found, and just my general first impression. If you don't know me, my name is Belgica. Uh, welcome to my channel. I make acting related videos every Monday and Thursday, and some of the videos are just my experiences in um, in acting. Some of them are just trying to share with you some of the information I have, like what my resume looks like, where to get headshots. So today I wanted to share with you my experience with LA casting because it's different than what I'm used to and San Francisco casting. So first let's start with the price. I just went ahead and did the yearly price and um, I thought it was a good deal so and I know I'm gonna be using it for a long time so I got the full year membership and with that you can get two free headshot sessions they're 15 minutes each uh, I made a completely different video for that a couple months ago so if you want to watch it I will be sure to link it so I usually get a lot of notifications for casting calls Monday through Friday and what I have started to notice is that the quicker you respond to them the more likely you're going to be um, selected to either come in for an audition or maybe film a self-tape audition and speaking of self-tape auditions um, back when I was in the Bay Area I would get um, self-tape audition requests I would get a notification you know for somebody that's casting for a commercial okay so I would put my headshot in there and my reel and then after that if they were interested in me they would send me a self tape audition request in LA casting I've noticed that a lot of the casting calls that are posted will immediately just tell you to film a self tape audition so instead of you being invited to it they're just like here submit a self tape audition about this I have seen some that are only through invitation but in the Bay Area I don't know that I saw that very much. I can't honestly remember one time. And for some reason here in LA, they post that kind of stuff that it says, hey, if you're interested in this, film a self-tape audition, turn it in by, you know, tomorrow at 5 p.m. or whatever it is. I like that because as an actor, it's gonna force you more to keep and practice, really sharpen your self-tape audition filming. If you are practicing that many times, um, I would say I see at least one one a week that I am interested in and in, and film either a voiceover self-tape audition or a regular self-tape audition for. Something else that I noticed that's specific to LA casting that I didn't see in San Francisco is that the casting companies are addressing these casting calls to the agents, which makes a lot of sense because in San Francisco, a lot of them are self-submissions or just people like me going on casting networks and submitting themselves. But here, there are a lot more agents and people that do that for you. So they will address it to the agents, which makes me feel like, okay, are they still taking self-submission seriously? So that's definitely a question that I'm going to be asking because I don't want to be wasting my time, you know, submitting to all of these auditions when they're not really paying attention to it. Well, now to the different types of casting calls that I have uh, seen and the ones that I have gotten callbacks and uh, the gigs that I have gotten. So uh, first, I've seen a lot of really high budget commercials in the Bay Area. Once in a while, you would see like a $5,000 job posted on San Francisco casting, but here it's pretty uh, prevalent. So there are a few jobs, lower budget commercials, maybe they'll only give you like 500, including buyout for a one day's work. I've seen a lot of music videos for different artists. Usually it'll pay around $800 or less. Um, so nothing, you know, too crazy. A lot of commercials, higher budget commercials. Some of them I've seen like $12,000. I saw a Spotify commercial for a couple. I think it was $5,000 for the couple. A lot, a lot of student films because of course we're in LA so there are a lot of film schools. Um, New York Film Academy, of course all the universities, UCLA, USC, all of that. So a lot of uh, schools as well as short films. So independent short films that you're not getting paid anything for. Sometimes it'll, po it'll show that they'll give you money for gas, $50, and then on top of that they'll feed you the day of and of course give you the the content for your reel. Speaking of content, content creators, I've also seen a lot of different uh, YouTubers that will post on LA casting for their gigs. It'll say, we need a high energy, you know, sister for a video and this is our YouTube channel, you can check it out, whatever. 
Again, that one usually, that one that I've seen a lot, it says it's only $100 for something like four to eight hours. And then once in a while, I'll also see extra stuff. So the first gig I ever did in LA was about a month ago and it was to be part of an audience being an extra. And um, that was pretty chill. Uh, it was only a few hours, so they didn't feed us. They gave us a break to go have lunch on our own, which that was fine. It was like a mid-budget, uh, a mid-budget shoot it looked like they were doing it for a few days i was only able to do it for one day but it was chill and then recently now we're going more towards the like personal projects for content creators and such uh i was contacted by a content creator i applied on la casting um and then they contacted me and say hey we want you to be part of the shoot do you, are you available this date and i said yes but before i agree to being part of this project i asked them if i could have a little bit more information um, and it was going to be an improv shoot which is fine like I'm down with improv but they didn't really provide anything except for like a one sentence description of what their scene was going to be about and then they told me that there were other creators that were going to be there that we were also going to be part of their um, sketches if we wanted to I checked out their work and it was cool at least that one person that was uh, what that I was communicating with but I ended up rejecting it because I asked them like okay but can you give me a little bit of outline like maybe what kind of characters I'm gonna be playing because I want to be professional and once once I get there you know I don't want to be like oh this is offensive I don't want to be part of this or I'm not gonna take off my clothes for this or just whatever I want to know at least a outline of what type of characters they are going to be because I did see their work and it was fine but I don't know if they're going in a new direction so I would definitely say protect yourself ask questions before going into a shoot like this if they were a friend of mine somebody that I already knew and they're like oh just come over and we're just gonna you know improv stuff and we'll, we don't really know what we're gonna be doing but you know just come over and we're, we're gonna have fun of course, I'd be like, cool, I trust you. I know it's gonna be a good time. I'm gonna be comfortable. So I would totally go. But in this occasion, they just weren't willing to give me any information about at least an outline. They gave me one sentence description about one scene. Um, so I just didn't feel comfortable. So I didn't end up doing it. I don't know if I missed out on it, but I would let them know, you know, in the future, I, you know, if we do work together, just because I'm trying to not I don't want to say waste my time, but I'm just trying to be comfortable, trying to protect myself. Um, so definitely do that. And then I recently also auditioned for a student film at the New York Film Academy. And um, I got a callback for that. So I'm going to be doing that callback in a few days. Um, so again, a lot of student films. And in my experience, student films and student scenes are a lot easier to be a part of because they have either worked with other students who are actors or they just have a little bit less of um, like restrictions because it is a student film they don't really have a budget or anybody to tell them like hey that character was cast wrong it's they're learning so they're more flexible in allowing different types of people and different um, levels of acting to join their projects as far as notifications and casting calls the amount that i get i see that i get a lot monday through friday and it's like the industry stops on weekends as far as LA casting because if I do see a casting call on a Saturday or Sunday, usually they will apologize and say, hey, I know it's Sunday or I know it's really late or I know it's the weekend and hopefully you can submit to this um, as soon as possible, you know? So it's like the people that post on LA casting know that people are trying to enjoy their weekends. So they tend to either apologize or not post at all on weekends, which I think is hilarious because in the Bay Area, it would just be random. You know, I would not get nearly as many as here. In the San Francisco Bay Area, I would get at most about six casting calls a day, if that, and it wouldn't be every single day. Sometimes it'd be on weekends, so it's a little bit more sporadic, where here in LA casting, I get Monday through Friday, I get some all day. So in the morning when I wake up, I apply to casting calls during my lunch, I apply to casting calls and then after work and of course on my days off I apply to casting calls if it's not a weekend um, so there's just a lot and the biggest thing about LA casting that I think they could improve in is the usability of the website just because um, you can't message back and forth through casting networks so let's say you apply to a job and then they're interested in having you come in to audition or submit a self-tape or something they want to message you um, so 
after they message you, you see it in your alerts and you can see the message, but you can't reply to them within the website. You have to go to your email that's attached to your account and then there you can reply to them. So it's just a little bit of a misconnect. I mean, it still works. It would be nice to be able to keep it organized within casting networks because there are a, little, a lot of different kinds of um, casting websites and it's nice to remember, oh yeah, it was a project from you know LA Casting and then you can see all of the information. You can go back to the casting call and reread the re description because if you're an actor, you know that sometimes you forget what you even applied for because you are getting so many casting calls all day and just applying to as many as you think would uh, would be good for you and sometimes those projects aren't for a little while and it's just it kind of gets jumbled up um, as far as what's from where and what the project is about what the pay was stuff like that and I think that's pretty much it if you want to see the stuff I'm talking about a little bit more in action I'm going to be uh, vlogging a little bit more about you know all of the ones I submit to versus the one I get to and then maybe going to some auditions I've filmed some auditions at home before that I vlogged um, so yeah, so subscribe to my channel if you're interested in that. I'm sure I have some type of vlog about my experiences and uh, check out the rest of my videos. Uh, at the end of every video, I do feature another channel. This is today's feature. If you want to be featured, make sure you're subscribed, like this video, and leave me a comment.